Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, I'm going to tie a bunch of previous videos together and do a comparison of different real-time clocks. One that's built into the Nexion display itself, one that is a real-time clock chip, and then kind of the faked real-time clock in the Arduino. And then I'm going to take photos of it and put them up on Facebook over time. If you want, you can go over to the Cheap Controls Facebook page and I'll put the pictures there. You don't have to join the private group or anything. I'm just going to put them up on the main page. What we have is we have this set up on the Nexion display. I have the real-time clock up here. I don't have anything configured correctly yet, um, but I'll get the I'll get the dates all and times all synced up. But for our purposes, it doesn't matter if the date's actually correct. We just want to know over time if it maintains accuracy. And then I have the Arduino real-time clock down here. And then I have the standalone real-time clock chip, which has a couple of errors I have to fix. One is the date or the year. It should be 2008 on this one, and it's 208. So I've got to add the zero. And then for the day's position, I have it set as the day of the week instead of the day of the month. So those are two things I'm going to have to change. We're going to pick up right where we left off. You can download this code over at the Cheap Controls website. If you can't find the code on the site, there's a comment form on the main page. Just put a comment in there asking for it, put your email address, and I'll send it off to you. I'm not going to spend too much time going over the code. You can watch the previous video if you want to get that information. But I'm taking the one that we used to set the internal Arduino configuration, and I'm going to add to that one. I already have this code set up to uh, put an initial value in the Arduino, and the time is set to December 31st, 23rd hour, 59th minute, and 52nd of 2020. And that way, after 10 seconds, everything resets. It's a good way just to do some testing. But what I also want to add in will be the ability to set the real-time clock to a wrong time. And so that way when I press the reset button, you can see that it changes to the time of the Nexion display. We're going to do that down here in the setup because we have to use this wire begin to start the I squared C bus so we can send the data to it. And just to quickly go over this, um, we set up the wire begin transmission. This is the address of the wireless or of the real-time clock chip, that 068. We set the address to be zero, and then we're going to write the seconds, and we're going to set everything to two. Seconds, minutes, hours, the day. The day doesn't really matter, but the date, the month, and the year. And then we get down here to the main loop. I'm going to separate this out a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. Um, when there's serial data available from the Nexion, we capture it right up here. And that's what we're going to get. When I send the character from, or when I send the time from the Nexion display, it's going to be a string, and it's going to have the date and the time. And then we're going to manipulate that string to pull the values out. But as we collect each character, it increments this variable called DFD. And the string we're going to get from the timer is 21 characters. So if we hit that 21 character, the 21st character, or get greater than 20, just to test, we're going to print it out on the serial monitor, and then we're going to reset the DFT to empty again, or the DFD to empty. I'm going to upload this, and I'll show you that. Okay, so now we don't see anything on the serial monitor until I press the reset button, or reset all button, on the Nexion display. And then you can see that we get the time. And I have this, you got to ignore the DFD equals. But this date and time is 21 characters long. Now, it comes out perfectly, it comes out working this way just fine. But if I get an error, and I'm going to keep pressing this and see if I can get an error. So now you can see here how I got an error that came from the Nexion display. And then after that, it's kind of messed up there. It does kind of correct down here, but I get some weird data. And so I'm going to do one more thing um, just to reset it so that that doesn't happen or it corrects a little bit quicker. And in my async delay, this happens every second. 
and it takes less than a second to get the data when I press the reset button. So every second I'm also going to reset the DFD. And then that way if I do get into some weird state it'll autocorrect every second. In the off chance that I happen to press the button and then it executes this delay while the data is coming in, I'll, I will have an error there too, but it will also autocorrect from that the next second. This is just something I'm putting in there just for an error check. Because I am hoping to, to run this for a while and hit that, well, hopefully I won't have to hit that reset button, but if I do, I want to make sure that it works. When we do the manipulation of this and we collect the data, it comes in in a string format. So we're going to use the substring form, format in the Arduino and then we're going to turn it into an, into an int. And the first value in the substring statement is zero based. So it starts from zero and counts up to 20. The second value is not zero based. It starts at one and will count to 21. So as I go through the next part of the code here, I'll refer back to this sheet. So now what we're going to set is we're going to set the seconds, the minutes, the hours, the days, the months, and the years from the string that comes in. And the seconds, we're going to get the substring of the DFD, and we're going to point to the seconds. And if you look up here, the seconds start at 19 and then go to 21. So we take substring 19, 21, and then turn it to an int. The minutes are 16 and 18, and that's 16 and 18, and so on as we work our way through all of that. And then once these are set, then they take over the values. We've set these variables to be global, so that means wherever we change them in our code, that's what they are. So when we read the values in from the action display, then we set them. And we're only going to set these if we've pressed the button, collected the string, and the string has, has longer than 21 characters, then we're going to set this. Now there is a chance that if the action sends some sort of weird code and it is longer than 20 characters, we could overwrite that. So this isn't completely error-proof. You'd probably want to put some sort of beginning string like time and then it, and then check for that first four characters, something like that. But for this case, I think it'll work just fine. I'm going to upload this and make sure that we can set that time. Okay, so now what we're going to be setting is the internal runtime clock on the Arduino. So when I press this reset button, it should go to this value up here. And you can see that it did. Now we're going to focus on the other one, on the standalone real-time clock. And as I said, we have to fix a couple things. So we're going to go to our tabs. And in the year, we have to add this time string equal to zero, or if it's less than. And we're looking at the year. So if the year is less than 10, it's going to add the zero on, so we get the full four digits. The other portion is the day up here. We want this to be date and not day. And now we should have that portion all done. I am going to do a quick compile just to make sure I didn't typo something. And now, as you can see, it says 2002. I sent a 2 to both the day and the date, so this won't be verified till we finish programming and hit the reset. You'll also notice that this went back to the original one because we uploaded it, and whenever you upload it or reset the Arduino, these two values will reset to something odd. Now we're going to set the values for the external real-time clock. And this is pretty easy. We just do the wire begin because we're using I squared C. We write to the memory or to the address that we're wanting to start writing data to. And then we do have to convert it from decimal to BCD, but we're going to use the seconds, the minutes, the hours. We're just going to send a 1 for the day because it shouldn't matter. Once we send the days, it will configure itself to be correct. And then we'll send the days, the months. And the year, though, the year is going to be the full value. It's going to be 
I believe it's going to be 2008. But what we have to do is we have to rip off and get it down to only two digits. So we're going to take the modulus of 2000, which is the remainder of 2000. And when you divide 2008 by 2000, you'll get 8 or 20 or whatever we set it up. It should work fine for what we're doing. And then we write these values up to the real-time clock, and then we end the transmission. This should pretty much be it. So I'll upload this, and we'll do a test. And we got what we expected, 1421, 2008, all the way down, 1920, 25. And depending on when the Nexion updates it as compared to when the real-time clock executes on the Arduino, you're going to see a little bit of a discrepancy here. But like I said, if I take a photo over a few days, we should start to see seconds go off. So in this video, we set the real-time clock chip to some static variable so we know if it ever gets reset where it will be. We took the time string from the Nexion and manipulated it so we could set the Arduino's internal real-time clock and then took those variables to set the real-time clock chip. And now we'll have something to compare with over time. And like I said early, earlier, feel free to come over to the Cheap Controls Facebook page and look for weekly or I'm not sure how often I'll do a picture of it. It depends on how soon it goes out of, out of time. I'll try to take a picture every morning and every evening for a little while and just see what happens. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.